Hi, I'm Anthony Autohuess, and welcome to my channel where we go on adventures in 3D with Blender and web development. Web 3D is definitely on the rise. All of the cool emerging tools and showcases we have lined up to look at are proof. Today we're going to dive into some new tools and examples that will inspire you on your next 3D web project. We'll also look ahead to what's coming next in 2024. New tools to make it easier and faster to bring your 3D content to the web. The first one I'm excited to show everybody is this little example that uses a new tool called ECC TRL. It's in the React 3 Fiber ecosystem. And it's got a character, an environment, obstacles, some basic lighting, all the essential elements that you have to create a little mini game. And it looks really cool. It's kind of fun. Uh, we even have some jumping and sprinting and stuff. And what a great jump start to be able to start putting an environment in with a little game and developing a concept very quickly. I'll put the link to this in the description, but also try to get it on screen here. I will show you this tool later on its own. We have all the tools at the end of this video. This next one I have to show you is just getting started but I wanted to show it just because it's an ambitious little project for putting like an escape room type environment together. You can see that all these objects are really meant to be clicked on and you know focused on and turned into an escape room type thing, whether it's clicking on these very realistic papers or post-it notes or seeing who this guy is in the picture frame. He's actually the, the developer of this, Matt Trainer or the Reverend. Uh, this should be interesting project as it develops, but shows some of the potential and ways, the direction that people are going with using this 3D web content. So here's a cool portfolio I found on the React 3 Fiber Discord. I just want to give them some free publicity here and talk about it because I thought it was a really cool implementation. I assume it's this handsome gentleman over the text box. He's got a little caricature that's animated of him up here on the top and it also includes some instructions so it's kind of cool to have this things where it's like 2d integrations of information within the the interface and as you click on the different navigation items it takes you to different areas within this little pocket universe and some of these characters are animated one of the things i really loved about this is how it is a blend of 3D and 2D. We've got the 2D stuff in the front with you know images and a little bit of text, a nice little navigation interface here. And the entire 3D background is really just augmenting the concise message that's up front. So I thought it was a great way to fill the space, give people a fun environment, kind of stand out. If you have a portfolio that you'd like to see featured in one of these videos, feel free to post them in the comments. I review every comment and I would love to see what you come up with and be happy to review it here. Give you some extra publicity and we'll talk about, you know, a few concepts of what you accomplished and what where you might be going with it. So this is a category of web 3D that I consider just to be background effects. All this is a very extreme example of it. You can see that we've got an actual 2D website that's kind of got lots of space around it. And that space is being used to show the background canvas that has all of the Web 3D stuff inside of it. Uh, animated, done very well. I don't have the sound piping through from the website, but this sound is kind of a nice immersive feature as well. So I recommend checking this out seeing what you might put into a background. And this, this kind of reminds me of when we used to do parallax backgrounds and we'd have just several layers of images and those images would, would move at varying rates to each other and it gives that 3D kind of illusion. And in this case, we actually just have the 3D in the background instead of trying to create it with layers of 2D. So pretty, Pretty cool, pretty extreme example of having effects in the background with Web 3D. Here's one I'm aware of because of the 3 Dialog Discord, which is the one that we discuss all the Web 3D stuff on. And 
the gentleman from Ireland here did a really impressive job with some of the tools. It's got so many different objects. This is, you know, a city scale level thing, and each building is actually a 3D little object. And all of this is done through applying SVGs, running it through a process, and you know, extruding them. But he's got layers of data that enable and disable, and a number of other features, including data that can be visualized. And one of the things he was experimenting with, which is really neat, is being able to show the 3D, the 3D objects as a level of detail that's close to the camera. But as you get further away, it's just an image. And you don't have to use that 3D or have that 3D rendered way off in the background. So there's a number of ways to do this. Uh, some of them were shown in their iterations in, within the channel, which was really cool to see with uh, different different methods of calling the 3D objects, but um, very ambitious project. Hope to see it continue to develop. This one is interesting because I already have my categorizations of Web3D pretty well thought out in my mind, and I did not think of this one because this is one where it's an interface. So usually the 3D implementations we have for the web are going to be your focus, your environment, effects uh, data or data visualization. And this one is a 3D interface, which is pretty cool. And, you know, there's definitely a whole category that we could explore for 3D interfaces. I think it's a little less mature currently than other applications for 3D on the web, but a uh, very cool implementation and just kind of fun to realize that you're actually using a virtual web browser on a phone, but in a 3D interface. So kind of like real world. Next, we have this model viewer, and this is meant to be a component just straight in a web browser. And I was unaware of it until somebody asked how to do this kind of stuff with uh, other web 3D content. And I was really impressed the more I looked into it. This is relatively new and just the quality of which it can display an item that's being focused on probably a product of some sort would make sense, to, but just anything that you're focusing on as a single object, it looks really good. And uh, it is meant to just work directly with a GLB, so you don't have to run a bunch of GLTF, JSX, or anything like that. And it has a lot of its own things that you can do with it. So here's the tool that was used for that demo in the very beginning. It's so cool. You can see that we've got the all the basic things already here. We've got the key mappings with even on-screen instructions. You have the character, you have physics, and all you have to do is bring in your models and then start tweaking. Pretty excited to see what people can come up with for it. it has so many different options that have been put in there. I'm sure you can extend it pretty easily, but if you haven't played with this yet and you like making little pocket universes and you know just playing around with bringing maybe your 3D elements or some 3D assets that you've seen on the web into a small game environment, this is gonna be a lot of fun. Thanks for joining me on this video while I got to talk to all the things that I liked seeing in the community that I had queued up. I shouldn't wait this long in order to do the next one, but you know these are all things that I had no credit, no, uh, no contribution to really, except for maybe talking to people in Discord. I want to bring some new stuff again, some new content that I've actually done and look forward to doing that for you in the coming months. Would love to see you in Discord and talk about what your projects you've got going on. See if we can help. See you online.